Okay, today I am in the Gettysburg National Cemetery, and we're going to do a video series that we've done before, but this one's going to be a little different. And this is going to be called The Location of the Speaker's Platform with Abraham Lincoln During the Gettysburg Address. The view we were are looking at now was actually shot from this position by photographer Alexander Gardner. He was one of three photographers that were at Gettysburg that day, the other being Peter Weaver of Hanover and David Backrack. But this view is Gardner. If you look here, you'll see the angles of the shots of the three photographers. And then in the very center where the triangulation is, is where the speaker's platform was that we'll look at again in a later part of this video. The three images that Gardner took were in stereo view, which was very popular in 1863. And again, when we look at the three photographers and where they took their images that day, you'll see that they were all focused on a particular spot. And if you get the center of their views and triangulate them, you can find exactly where Abraham Lincoln was standing on the speaker's platform on November 19th, 1863, as he delivered his immortal Gettysburg Address. I want to mention over the years, there's been de several historians, including myself, that have made approximate locations. William Frasnito, Timothy Smith, Gary Adelman, a lot of online bloggers. But uh, until Christopher Oakley, Professor Oakley, came up with this theory, which is now being accepted by not only the National Park Service, but by most people who look at his in-depth research and the technology that he used to get to this point. So we've seen this view and now we're going to go ahead and take a look at an image and where photographer David Backrack was standing also in the National Cemetery looking straight ahead at the flagpole, which is today where the Soldiers' Monument stands. So Backrack would have been standing here. The flagpole that you see in his image is today the Soldiers' Monument. And then just to the left of that monument would be the Speaker's Platform, which is actually divided between the Evergreen Cemetery and the National Cemetery. And it appears now what this latest research that Abraham Lincoln spent a good part of the three hours that he was here in Evergreen Cemetery toward the back of the platform why Everett Everett had given his over two hour address. But when it was time for Lincoln to speak and deliver the Gettysburg Address, he walked toward the front of the platform, which is today in the National Cemetery. And again, you can see Backrack's triangulation and his viewpoint from here, with it being overlaid on Google Maps. Later on in this video, we'll actually walk to the exact spot where the front of the platform was and where Abraham Lincoln stood to deliver his immortal Gettysburg Dress on November 19th, 1863. And we'll actually quote the address from the position where he gave his address. And next, we will go to the spot, which is actually the site of a hotel today, where Peter Weaver from Hanover took the first of his two shots he took that day. Looking uphill with the Tawny Town Road, the gatehouse, the tulip poplar tree, and the flagpole, which is depicted by the Soldiers National Monument, where we stand today. And that was taken from the William Duttera House and Brickyard. And we will head there next to take a look at that location. Now, the view that we're looking at now was actually the image was taken by Peter Weaver of Hanover, Pennsylvania. And the view he took from this location was that of the 
Tawny Town Road, taken from the second story of the William Duttera House. Now, William Duttera also had a brickyard, and you can see the parking here. In the distance, you can see the Tawny Town Road, and the house sat at the base of East Cemetery Hill. In the center, you can see the flagpole, and of course, the Evergreen Cemetery. And here is what the Duttera House looked like. This is taken from the Ziegler's Grove Tower, which no longer exists. Though no photos of the Duttera House exist, there is a sketch that of what the Duttera House looks like. So we have one photograph of it taken from the Ziegler's Grove Tower, and then this sketch that shows what where Peter Weaver stood to take the famous photo on November 19th, 1863. So again, as we stand here on the second deck of this hotel, looking uh, northeast, uh, in 1863, this would have been pretty much open fields. Uh, we would have been at the Duttera House uh, and Brickyard. His Brickyard, as you could see in the original photograph, you could see where they dug into the ground uh, to get the materials to make the bricks. But on November 19th, 1863, it was a parking lot for horses and carriages as thousands upon thousands of people came to Gettysburg to watch President Abraham Lincoln deliver his immortal Gettysburg Address and, of course, the Orator Edward, Edward Everett. We are now in... Evergreen Cemetery, looking at the rear side of the Evergreen Cemetery gatehouse. And it was here that photographer Peter Weaver of Hanover took his second photograph on November 19th, 1863, from the window that we're zooming in on. And in that photograph, um, it looked out at Evergreen Cemetery toward what is today the National Cemetery. And I'll go ahead and put my camera in the direction. Now, of course, Mr. Weaver was up in the window, so his view is taken from a higher angle. But this uh, is the area that he had it zoomed in on. And in that photograph, you can see Alexander Gardner perched on his platform. You can also see the other photographer, David Backrack, who was setting up his camera. On the right side of the photograph was the National Cemetery, which in 1863, there was no fence like there is today. Just after the battle, this area actually had a lot of boulders on it that were drug as they began to bury soldiers in Evergreen and in the National Cemetery. This particular soldier, Frederick Huber of the 23rd Pennsylvania, was the second Gettysburgian killed during the Civil War. He was killed at the Battle of Fair Oaks. And nine months later, his headstone was struck here by shell on July 2nd, 1863. Now we are walking over toward the location of the speaker's platform. And this is where this platform would have been divided between the uh, National Cemetery and the Evergreen Cemetery. Abraham Lincoln would have spent a good deal of that time actually in Evergreen Cemetery, right here where you see this open area here would have been the backside of the speaker's platform that Abraham Lincoln delivered his immortal Gettysburg Address. Edward Everett would have been speaking in the cemetery. You can see the platform as depicted with most of it behind this fence. Then Abraham Lincoln would come up and say, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war, 
and we have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled it here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work, which they who fought here have thus so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the earth. Now, as we've been here in Evergreen Cemetery, looking just over the fence toward the Soldiers National Monument, that is where the front of the odd-shaped platform would have been. And again, if you want to rewind here, I did post an image of what the platform looked like and where it was positioned between the two cemeteries. Of course, in 1863, there was no fence. I'm going to go ahead and stick my camera here through the fence, and when I do, we will be standing where Abraham Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address, right next to that little bush right there in front of our camera. And then we'll take a walk over to the National Cemetery and look at it from this side. Again, we are now standing on the front of the speaker platform where Abraham Lincoln stood and gave that address in which I just quoted from on November 19th, 1863. And then we're going to take a peek back into the Evergreen Cemetery now. And if you're coming here and looking for where the speaker's platform is. And as you can see, there's the gatehouse, which you can see in several of the November 63 views. But if you want to know the spot where the rear of the platform is, just look for some headstones. Uh, of course, this headstone here says Sioli. Okay, you're going to see this very open area. You're going to have a lot of uh, gravestones to the right and, of course, to the left, but this very open area right here, okay, behind the Aaron Shealy plot. And by the way, you'll want to go back and watch my Aaron Shealy farm video that I've done as well, which was a field hospital, and today is the site of the Gettysburg Outlet Malls. And then you'll see this little gravestone bench and as you look here um, you'll see this open area and that is where the platform was we are now in the national cemetery at the soldiers monument which marks the spot where the american flag was on that day and then there's the kentucky monument and this was site was traditionally thought to be where lincoln stood on the platform however as i zoom toward the fence that little opening there between those bushes is where the platform stuck out and we're gonna look at this video here you can see again the platform with abraham lincoln the relief tent uh behind it and we're gonna walk over to the spot where that image would have been would have been that illustration rather would have been on november 19th 1863 so when you come to gettysburg and you're looking for something called hollowed ground it is right here and it can pretty much be proven through the photographs that were taken on that day uh and now with 21st century 
uh, video technology that's been used to prove this is the spot of the speaker's platform. So I'm going to post a few things here. Uh, first, I'm going to post Lincoln standing here uh, at the platform. There you go. And then, of course, this is a historic day for me as well. So I will be taking a photograph of me standing in the spot where Abraham Lincoln was standing. And I'll post that as well um, on this video. And then anybody that does uh, GPS tracking, um, I'm going to post the GPS coordinations. So it's 350 degrees north. And then there you can see the, uh, the coordinations as well. Um, to mark this spot as the speaker's platform for Abraham Lincoln. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation may live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address November 19th, 1863, right here in this spot where the speaker's platform was. So again, this has been Abraham Lincoln at Gettysburg and the location of the speaker's platform on November 19th, 1863. I am your historian, Frank Patrick Marone Jr., of Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours. I want to thank you for watching the video. Please feel free to share it with your friends and family. It can be viewed on Truth Social, Rumble, and YouTube. Thanks for watching.